college without him. I'm gonna get a great job without him. I'm gonna marry me a beautiful honey, and I'm having me a whole bunch of kids. I'm gonna be a better father than he ever was. And I sure as hell don't need him for that, because ain't a damn thing he could ever teach me about how to love my kids. How come he don't want me, man? Hey, 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 Conscious Crew, we are back for another episode of the Conscious Creative Corner, where we are unpacking your trauma to heal your relationships. I am your host, Sia, the Transparent Therapist, and today we are getting into the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. The actual premise of Fresh Prince has been an all-time still syndicated series that goes on today because it was so relatable. And I want us to do a deep dive into how that famous scene where Will breaks down in Uncle Phil's hands or arms crying about his father not wanting him because I think many of us can relate to that internal experience that we do not address. So before I get into it, make sure you hit that like button, that subscribe button, join the conscious crew because here I'm taking entertainment and bringing it to you in reality of how our traumas, our internal traumas are depicted on the screens that y'all watch in everyday life. And maybe y'all can relate to it and then put it into a real life perspective when I do it clinically so you can apply it to your life. We're going to watch this scene for those of you who have never seen the episode. It's when Will's father comes back after like 14 years and Will's mad hype. He's like, all right, cool. I'm going to get to chill with my father, hang out, do all the things I'm supposed to do. But then Will's father says, look, I know I said I was going to do these things, but I can't do them anymore. So let's just watch. Daddy O! What's up? Will, <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Um, some business came up I got to handle. So we're going to have to put a, our trip on hold. You understand? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's cool. That's cool. Just, just for a couple of weeks. Mm, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a little longer. Yeah, whatever, whatever. So here we can see Will is, he feels a wave. He's not really saying it, but his body language is like, oh yeah, that's cool. But he's minimizing what's happening. He's kind of placating and minimizing what he's feeling inside because of course, internally he's like, all right, my dad is playing me once again, but I have to stand up. I can't show him that I really care because he hasn't showed me, as in Will, that he's cared. So why should I care? Look, I'll, I'll call you next week and we'll iron out the details, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, yeah. It was great seeing you, son. You too, Lou. So I think it's really important to stop here, to show the distance that Will is now putting in between him and his father because though Lou is his dad, he's not really stepping in that fatherly role that Will really hoped would have happened you can see and i feel like will smith does a great job in acting can't nobody say he don't deserve the words he has but even down to the body language where his hands are in his pocket he's kind of closing himself off and if you've seen in the beginning of the scene he's real open arms wide open smiling now he's kind of closing back in because he's like man this man don't want nothing to do with me so why am i even opening myself up and again, just with the, yeah, yeah, it's cool, it's cool, kind of stopping even the pseudo welcome that Lou is trying to give him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, Will. You know what, actually, this works out better for me. You know, the Slimmies of Summer come to class wearing next to nothing, you know what I'm well, saying? Well, it's all right to be angry. Hey, why should I be mad? I'm saying, at least he said goodbye this time. I just wish I hadn't wasted my money buying this stupid present. So I love that Uncle Phil validates Will's emotions. It's okay to be angry. And a lot of times I'll tell my patients and clients, like, I'm never going to tell you to not be angry, not be frustrated because your emotions are coming up for a reason. In fact, our, all of our emotions, even the, ne the ones we deem to be negative, are some sort of protective factor. So Will or Uncle Phil telling Will, like, look, it's cool. You could be... You could be angry. I think it gives so much power to it because his defenses are coming up. And his natural defense is to be 
um, funny or to joke around so that the hurt doesn't come through. And a lot of us do that. Like we will laugh about a situation, even though we're super anxious inside of about the anger that we're having, or we'll make jokes about a situation because we just are very uncomfortable about what's going on or what's going to ensue. I'm sorry. I, you know, if there was something that I Hey, you know do. what? You ain't got to do no, nothing, Uncle Phil. Hey, you know, ain't like I'm still five years old, you know? Ain't like I'm going to be sitting up every night asking my mom, when's daddy coming home, you know? Who needs him? Hey, he wasn't there to teach me how to shoot my first basket, but I learned, didn't I? Hey, I got pretty damn good at it, too, didn't I, yeah, Uncle Phil? Did. Got through my first day without him, right? Mm -hmm. I learned how to drive. I learned how to shave. I learned how to fight without him. I had 14 great birthdays without him. He never even sent me a damn card. To hell with him! And so now we see him oscillating, right? Where he's like, I'm okay, I'm okay. And then he's yelling like, yo, forget him. That is a bunch of the emotions erupting inside of him. And he's making justifications as to why he should be okay. I got through college without him. I did this without him. I learned how to play ball without him. All the things that daddy is supposed to show me, I did it without him. And I'm going to be good and I'm going to stay good. But now I can see like I'm bringing these things up into my conscious mind and he's like, man, forget him. And now you can see the anger coming through because these emotions are all kind of coming up for him all at once. A good example is if you guys have ever seen um, the film Inside Out or the movie, it's like a Pixar movie through Disney, I believe. It's a great example of what our emotions are doing. They all think they know what's happening is or how they think the emotions that are coming up, they, they as in the emotions, feel like they know what's best, right? That's what we call the protective parts. Um, the anger, the frustration, the joy, they are like, hey, let me step in. Let me drive the boat for a little bit or let me ride, drive the car for a little bit, which is the car, the vehicle being in your body. And that's what we're seeing here. All of those emotions are just starting to erupt because he can't regulate them in this intense moment. I ain't need him then and I don't need him now. Well, well. Nah, you know what, Uncle Phil? I'm gonna get through college without him. I'm gonna get a great job without him. I'm gonna marry me a beautiful honey and I'm having me a whole bunch of kids. I'm gonna be a better father than he ever was. And I sure as hell don't need him for that because ain't a damn thing he could ever teach me about how to love my kids. How come he don't want me, man? So for my audio listeners, at the very end, Uncle Phil gives Will a hug and he releases, like Will starts to release his tears and he's like, how come he don't love me, man? And that's him pausing. There was a brief pause. And I think that's when everything kind of settled in and his brain kind of slowed down and he started to process like, yo, this dude really don't love me because he's equating the quality time that his dad should have shared with him not occurring. And he's thinking, man, these people that really love me are going to show up for me into, in these important times. These people are not going to abandon me like my dad did. Why does not? Why does he not love me? And we're seeing that happening. So the audio listeners, that's just what the last few portions of the scene entails because you couldn't hear anything. And I just wanted to, to kind of paint that picture for you. Throughout this episode, um, we saw a lot going on. <laughs> I know for some, this might've looked comical. For others, this is actually the real depiction of people's lives where you might have an absentee father or mother or caregiver who you always wanna be with, but they're just not there for you. And that hurts, right? And so every now and then you're like looking out the window, right? Just imagine that little you looking out the window, like, is daddy coming home yet? Is daddy coming home yet? And he doesn't. Or if daddy shows up or mom shows up, she don't got no time for you. This is why I think it's important for us to talk about the attachment styles here. So don't get me wrong. Will Smith or Will in this episode, he has a lot of um, experiences where he has built secure attachments. So we can see the secure attachments happening with him and Uncle Phil, especially in this scene where Will feels very safe with... Um, Uncle Phil, where he's like falling into his embrace. He's like, all right, fine. Somebody has to love me. And so Uncle Phil loves me and that's fine. We can see um, a secure attachment in the closeness that he exhibits with them, uh, especially with Aunt Bib too. He has a secure attachment with them. And that's not just in this episode, it's in a different episode and others too. Um, we also can see a anxious attachment style. And we see that in Will when we're looking at him 
with his dad, right? Where he's like, man, I got him this figurine or statue to give him. I'm so anxiously waiting to give it to him and he's not showing up. The relationship that he's having with his dad, it just embodies the insecurity that his dad instilled in him since it's been 14 years, right? And so as a child, he's thinking like, oh, okay, I think dad is going to be here. So I'm, I'm longing for and yearning for that closeness. And so I'm going to do everything I can to get close to him. And now while I'm pushing him away, I don't need him. He's leaving. I don't need him. That is true symbolism when it comes to anxious attachment styles. It's that push and pull like, oh, I want to get close, but... Man, he did this one thing. Um, although Lou, you was that wrong, okay. But even though he's like, man, I can't, I can't hang with you today. Well, I don't need you anyway. That is, that's his anxious attachment style happening. Then we can see more of like that avoidant attachment, right? And those are for the individuals that create distance from each other, and they may even struggle with intimacy sometimes. Um, that's Lou. Lou has an avoidant attachment style, which might have occurred when Lou was a child. So that's Lou who's like, man, I do want to be in my son's life, but uh, man, that, it seems too much right now. And I'm again, I'm encourage you guys to go watch this film. I'm sorry, the show, because you're going to see this more now that I've seen it. And even if you've seen the show 12 times, you watch this podcast episode and listen to this podcast episode and then go back and watch the, the episode um, from Fresh Prince. You're going to see like, wow, yeah, they're, all of these attachment styles are there. So uh, Lou presents an avoidant attachment style where he is very much so wanting to connect with Will, but not really wanting to connect. So he's creating that distance and struggling with that intimate father-son bond, which is really hard to watch. Then we have our disorganized attachment those are people that d display like a mix of like anxious attachment and avoidant behaviors in this anxious attachment. I'm sorry, in this disorgan attachment, it usually stems from unresolved trauma. Okay. And we see this in Will when he breaks down at the end of the episode, he is going through it. <laughs> so you see his emotions oscillating from anxious to avoidant. I don't need him. I don't want him. Why doesn't he love me? This is classic case of a disorganized attachment. And that's because he's had some unresolved trauma with his dad and the abandonment. So we're thinking about the abandonment trauma that we'll experience, right? That many of us experience all the time, but sometimes we don't acknowledge the abandonment. This occurs because this significant person in his life who was supposed to provide him security didn't do that. Will's dad left when he was pretty young. Right. And so the fear of somebody coming in his life and leaving is one that Will is always going to have unless, you know, he's processing it. And so let's say he came into my office and we did some EMDR coaching. OK, the first thing I would say to Will is let's go through your history. I want to identify your, your how you grew up. Did you have siblings? Who were your caregivers? Who were the primary sources of security for you? I would then go after doing some history taking, I would go ahead and see if I could identify through a couple sessions, right? Because history taking and preparation takes a lot. <laughs> but at the back, I would go ahead and I would assess all the triggers, um, like trigger memories and core memories Will might have had. And then all subsequent memories after that, because in EMDR, these are the things that we're going to process. Again, I love me some EMDR, y'all. Trauma therapy is my thing. Trauma coaching is my thing. So your relationships can be healthier. It's important to identify where the problems are in your relationship, which is why I created the free assessment that you guys can take below, where it's about 38 to 40 questions. And I am going through with you. Really, it's self-guided, but I help you through questions for you to identify what problem areas you have in your life that might be disrupting the flow of your relationships. So take some time, take that free assessment. Again, it's totally free. Go through it. So this way, if you ever sit down with me, which you should, or another trauma therapist or a trauma coach or relationship coach, you know that these are the areas in which you need to work on so that your relationships can have longevity. Okay. So in, like I was saying, in the whole portion where we're watching Will Oscillate, the abandonment is there. He knows the problem 
that is occurring is, hey, I didn't form the secure attachment with my dad when he was around because he was just, well, if he was around, he wasn't around and he left me and my mom. And so now I just know connecting is really hard. And every time I get my hopes up to connect with this man, he's throwing me by the wayside. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. It's it's fear. It's separation. It's all these things that we go through that makes us feel insignificant. And that's what Will starts to feel. Why doesn't he want me? Notice that the question wasn't, what's wrong with him? He internalized it to say, why doesn't he want me? What's wrong with me? That's a lot, guys. And we don't even understand that sometimes our internal conversations are so internalized when things that are externally happening to us, we internalize those messages to say, there must be something wrong with me. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes you guys are in the wrong. Sometimes we're in the wrong. But sometimes we have to learn how to separate ourselves from the problem too, because I don't think this was a problem with Will. This was a problem with Lou, his dad, not wanting to step up and take responsibilities. I don't know. Of course, this is a fictional story, but this is a depiction of somebody's real life. Okay. I don't know what was going on with Lou for Lou to be like, I can't. I can't be with Will. Even though Will's almost like a grown man right now, I can't be with Will. I don't know what was going on in Lou's life, Lou's life when he had a, a small son, a 10-year-old son, a 9-year-old son, 11-year-old son. I don't know why Lou couldn't say I can step up. But see, this is a Lou problem and not a Will problem. But when we have these unsecure attachments in childhood, it becomes a... Unfortunately, we take it on to become an us problem and not our parents problem. So it really impacts the emotional strength that, or the, well, the emotional strength and tie that Lou and Will had. So some key themes here that I really want to point out to you guys, healing through your relationships, whether it's healing through a platonic relationship, although here we're looking at a familiar relationship, it's important to take your healing seriously. Because if not, you're going to start to develop this disorganized attachment. And pretty soon, every time somebody does something even remotely small, you're going to push them away and then pull them back and have these just kind of explosive moments that no one really should have because our goal is to be in self. Self looks calm. Self is creative. When you're in self, you're confident. You're connected. Connected in the sense of grounded, connected to people. You don't want to keep oscillating through these things, going back and forth, back and forth. So it's important for us to acknowledge that healing in our relationships are key. We also want to break the cycle. All right, so we're going to break the cycle of this trauma and abandonment. Though we can't, it's not that Will wants to have this abandonment, but breaking the cycle to which it becomes a stronghold for us, where it's just like, I'm subject to this trauma. I'm subject to this abandonment. And making sure we have people that can intervene like Uncle Phil where he says like, well, look, it's okay to be angry. You can be mad. You have every right to be because Uncle Phil, he normalized the situation for um, Will that he was going through. Then emotional vulnerability. If y'all know the show, Will doesn't really get emotional or he doesn't show intense emotions, right? He's pretty happy-go-lucky, really funny, um, like a joy to be around. And this is the first time we really see him or one of the first times we really see him in, in Fresh Prince breaking down, showing true character. I want to say, and I, I don't want to misspeak, but this episode is so memorable and especially this scene is so memorable because it spoke to the emotional side of us. It's so easy for us to laugh, but sometimes it's really hard for us to really touch on important facts like, are we worthy enough? And Will was communicating his worth through this mess, this scene. I don't feel worthy. I don't feel valuable because my dad, someone that's supposed to be in my life who should want me, doesn't want me. This emotional vulnerability, it expressed his pain and expressed the pain that you might really have right now that you could have been ignoring. When you start the healing process, we can learn how to be more emotional, more emotionally vulnerable we can learn how to regulate some of these emotions that we're experiencing. And it just makes for an easier 
pathway to having healthier relationships because that's what we want. So in this episode, it was a very short snippet. So I don't have um, the other scenes to show you, but it's important that we also know when we do start to feel triggered from our own emotional abandonment issues or emotional vulnerability moments, right? Um, Let's say, for instance, Lou didn't decide to go and he stayed and he spent some time with Will. How do you, how do y'all think that would have went? I'm assuming they would have had a good time. He would have gave Lou the statue. They would have laughed, but that trauma would have still remained. And I'm saying that because now Will would have always been on guard. That some kind of thought in his head thinking like, is my dad going to leave tomorrow? Because I know he left in the past and this is a pattern. We need to break those patterns. It's important for us to understand when patterns are occurring in order for us to be understanding of that. We have to be very self-aware. Are y'all practicing self-awareness? I'm really pausing because I want you to think. Okay. Self-awareness is not just like, oh, I'm hungry today. Self-awareness looks like, wow, I might have overreacted or I underreacted or I numbed myself or I'm feeling very indifferent because I don't know how I'm feeling in this, like truly feeling in the moment. There is this wonderful picture, and I wish I had it to show y'all, of an iceberg, right? And I think an iceberg is used in many metaphors or like symbolic things, but iceberg is what we see, right? So sometimes you might be with your partner and your partner is going, I should, they irate, I, they're angry, okay? And all you're seeing is anger. Underneath that iceberg, everything else, insecurities, fear, anxiousness, unworthiness. Again, on the top is anger. Underneath is really what's happening. So again, to use this scene, we see Will being angry. But underneath, I'm seeing, wow, he has some insecurities about himself as being a son. Or wow, I see him fearful of maybe not having a great attachment with someone else in the, in the future because of his past. Or wow, I have a fear of never truly having a father figure in, well, he has Uncle Phil, but my father in my life. And we see all of that through just the anger. I want y'all to be aware of when you are truly angry or if you're truly feeling something else, unworthiness, insecurities. Don't just pass it off as anger because our anger says so much more. So, 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 so much more. I, again, encourage y'all to go watch this episode, uh, practice your emotional expression, but we've reached a point in the episode where it's for the culture. All right. So y'all know for the culture, it's always something Jamaican. I'm going to mix it up for y'all one of these days, but there's a phrase that says every mickle make a muckle. And what that means is. Every little bit counts or every little things can make up big things. And I wanted to share that with y'all because I want you to think about these little moments here that we might see insignificant and really little because Will, in this episode, we spent some, he didn't spend time, time with his dad, but he spent a little bit of time with his dad. But in this small, like 15 second interaction where Lou was like, look, Will, you know, I got some things to do, you know, I might be back in a couple weeks or a couple days and he keeps extending it. This little interaction made a big impact on Will because then in the next 30 seconds, we see him spiraling. Every little thing we do can make up a big thing. And that's why I want to share that phrase with y'all. So every time y'all think like, oh, this is just so small or this little fight doesn't matter. It does. It's important for us to sit and process it because it's going to make up a huge problem in the end. If y'all enjoyed this episode and y'all want to see more like this, do me a favor. Drop in the comment section. As you're, Don't wait till the video's end, ending. Just drop in the comment section if y'all want me to review and break down other episodes. Right now I have this good series going on where I'm doing black films, black sitcoms. 
somebody wants me to do Love Island. I can't, y'all keep asking me to do Love Island, y'all. And I realize that Love Island is like a big brother. So God, I don't know if I got the time for that, but we going to see. But relationships, trauma, how to heal, how to work through them so your relationships can be a one day one. All right. Drop it in the comment section below. And in fact, I have something for y'all. There's a video that pops up right here. Make sure you click it because you don't want to miss what I said at the two minute mark. Trust me. All right. Click it. Watch it. All right, y'all. Walk good. Keep the vibes high. And I will see y'all in the next episode.